So how are they produced? It's usually a pretty easy process uh, in production of polyclonal uh, compared to now monoclonal which we'll be looking at in our next lesson. The very first step is you obtain your antigen. What antigen do you want to have polyclonal antibodies produced against? So you identify your antigen. Sometimes you can also add an adjuvant or conjugate your antigen to an adjuvant. An adjuvant helps make the antigen more potent or more immunogenic so that it can cause even a higher immune response and that means even many or a lot of production of polyclonal antibodies. So once you have obtained your antigen, conjugated it to an adjuvant where necessary, then you're going to identify a host to immunize. The host can be rabbits, guinea pigs, goats, sheep, rats, mice, chickens, etc. Then you're going to inject, in this case we are using a rabbit, inject your antigen into the rabbit and the rabbit of course uh, is going to produce antibodies because the antigen will activate the B cells and the plasma B cells will produce polyclonal antibodies and now to obtain these uh, secreted antibodies you're going to obtain the antiserum draw blood again and get the antiserum which we are going to purify and obtain our polyclonal antibodies and there be a collection of different types of antibodies remember we talked about IgG, IgM, IgE, IgD so there will be a collection of different types of antibodies let's look at some examples of polyclonal antibodies one of them is digoxin immune fab digoxin is a medication that is used to treat cardiac problems and sometimes we could have what we call digoxin or digitoxin toxicity and digoxin is derived from a digitalis plant the fox gloves digitalis plants the fox gloves like this one I have given an example or sometimes we could have poisoning through consumption of this plant by animals and uh, human beings. So we raise polyclonal antibodies against this uh, digitalis derivative so that in the situation of digitoxin toxicity, we can administer these polyclonal antibodies. They bind to the digoxin and we are able to reverse the poisoning or the toxicity. We have another example called the rho D immunoglobulin. And this in the market you find it as raw gum. And this one is made from pulled human sera or human plasma donated by Ressa's negative donors. So the D antigen is the one that gives us a positive, uh, for example, blood group A positive. And those without the D antigen are, for example, blood group A negative now in this individuals with negative they are able to produce antibodies against the d so once you give d antigen to humans with a negative they are going to produce the racers antibodies now once we do that we are able to not purify the human serum and these human antibodies against d antigen can be used in binding the antigen in situations of uh, maternal active immune response towards the fetus in situations where the mother is recess negative and the fetus is recess positive because once the fetus is recess positive the antigen that is the d antigen is able to cross the placenta to, to the mother who is recess negative causing the mother to produce antibodies against the antigen 
be. Now, to prevent this, because eventually, a particularly in multiple pregnancies, it will result to hemolytic disease of the newborn, where there will be destruction of the fetus's red blood cells once these anti-D crosses back to the fetus. So to prevent this, we usually now will give mothers the raw D immunoglobin. Now, this raw D immunoglobulin is going to bind to the D antigens that are coming from the fetus so that there will not be any production of anti-D antibodies. We also use raw gum in immune ribosotropinic or pura in people who have recess positive.